If you're involved in application development or deployment, you'll know the importance of secrets. So things like passwords, certificates, private keys, all those kinds of things, right? And the ability to deploy and share them, and I guess then subsequently manage them in simple and secure ways. Well, in this short video, we're going to see how we can use Docker Data Center to deploy a secret to an application. So what we'll do in the video is we'll see how to create a secret. We'll then deploy a WordPress based application comprising two services and we'll attach the secret to that app. And what it'll do is it'll allow the web front end component of the app to connect to the database back end using a password stored inside of the secret. And in the demo here, we'll see how it works. So here we are in the UCP component of Docker Data Center and we'll come under resources here and we'll create a new secret. I think we'll call it WP1 and then in the value bit here we can put whatever the secret comprises right. I mean for this demo we'll just go with some plain text but you can paste in certificates and private keys and the likes if that's how you're rolling. Now as well as that you can alter permissions, add labels, all the kind of stuff that you'd expect for role based access control. But we're just going to hit create here and that's done. So here it is here. Now we can click around and we can see its permissions and its ID and stuff like that. But nowhere can we now view the actual contents of the secret. You see once you create a secret, that's it. There's no way to go back in and view it in plain text. No chance, right? It is securely stored now. Okay, well, I'll tell you what, let's go and spin up this WordPress app. And first off, we're going to create a network for it to use. I think we'll call it WPNet, and then we'll just leave it with the default values here. Now for a couple of services. We'll call this one WPDB for the WordPress database bit. We'll use this version of the MySQL image. We'll come up here and we'll put it on the WordPress network that we just created. Then over here, right, this is where we give it the secret. Now we called it WP1 like we see here. And then by default, if we leave this target name bit blank, then the target's also going to be called WP1. But you know what? We can put something different here if we want. And what it's going to do is that within the containers Linux file system, there's going to be a tempfs volume mounted to slash run slash secrets and then a file's going to be put in there called whatever we put in this target name box. But like we said, if we just leave it blank, then it's going to be whatever's over here. But the important thing, right, inside of that file is going to be the secret. And it's only going to exist in an in-memory tempfs file system on the container. So it never gets written out to persistent storage on the container or the likes. But yeah, simple as that. We're not quite done though. We need an environment variable here called this. And then for its value, we tell it where the secret file is going to be. Cool, let's deploy. All right, now let's go deploy the WordPress front end service. Uh, we'll call it WPFE this time. We'll just use the latest WordPress image here. We'll publish it like this. So we should be able to reach it on 8000 from the outside. We'll stick it on that WordPress network again. And up here in environment, we get to mount that secrets file again. I think we'll stick with the default name again. And we'll give it this environment variable to tell it where to find the secret and what to do with it. Okay, then last up, we tell it just where to find the WordPress database. Now, the hostname portion of this here is the name that we gave the service that we already deployed. And then we give it the port that it's listening on. And we should be good to go. All right, that's looking good. Now, let me just break out the lab diagram again to explain what we've got. So we've got two services, front end and database, and each is running just a single container. But they've both got the secret mounted in as a file in an in-memory file system. And we configured things so that inside the secret is the password to the database. And then we told the front end how to connect to the database. Okay. So you know what? 
With that deployed and published externally on port 8000, we should be able to hit any node in the cluster here on 8000. And there we go. That's our simple WordPress app all up and running. Behind the scenes, remember, we've got the database and the front end, both with access to the secret, and the web front end is using that secret to access the database. In fact, why don't we jump onto one of the containers? So if we drill into this service here, let's look at tasks, just the one of course, so this is the container that's running as part of the web front end service. And if we pop onto the console up here, tell you what, let's make that a bit bigger. Okay, this is us logged onto the terminal of our web front end container. Well, let's see if that secret file exists. That's it. And let's make sure it's got that string inside of it. Brilliant. How good is that? I mean, it's simple and it's secure. Another great tool from Docker Data Center. To learn more, come and visit us at www.docker.com enterprise.